Thank you for the kisses. Oh, thank you. Don't don't bite my earrings. Hey everyone, hi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today what we are doing is that, or what I'm doing rather, is that I'm going to be doing the post script tag. I was tagged twice in this. Um, I was tagged by Jennifer Brooks. Um, I was tagged by Kelly from Books I'm Not Reading, and then Aaron Facer put up a version of the, of his, his version this morning, which I wanted to direct you all to because it was really good. Jennifer Brooks's video was really good, Kelly's video was really good, Aaron's video was really, really good, and he kind of tagged anybody who had the space to fit this tag in, and I do. So I'm going to be doing the post script tag that was originally created by a YouTuber named Adam, who I will link down below. What I forgot to mention was that I am going to be doing Becky, Becky from Teacup the Storyteller. I'm going to be doing her tag, the Three Musketeers tag, in a children's classics edition. And I'm going to be doing Bob the Booker's tag, his end of days tag, but it might be at the beginning of days in January. And it's a great kind of end of the year questions. It didn't overlap with my reflections video and it's not going to overlap at all with my top 10 books of the year. Uh, maybe a little bit, but um, you know, that's its own separate thing. So this is more just about reflecting on the reading year. Numbers, kind of numbers wise, y'all you'll, you'll, will see, or you can peep the questions in the description box below. Um, and yeah, so I think I covered all of the, the beginning stuff for tag videos and I'm just gonna jump right in as they say. I have my phone here so I can read the questions off, of course. Okay, uh, question number one. The longest book you read this year and the book that took you the longest to finish. This is gonna be the same book for both. The longest book and the book that took me the longest to finish was a book that I read quite early in the year, and it was Michelle Faber's The Crimson Petal and the White. I found out a book, I found out about this book from a friend, and she, her and I got into a, a kind of a long dialogue on email about her favorite books of all time. And this was on her favorite books of all time, and <laughs> the book intrigued me. Let me tell you what it is about. It is set in the Victorian time period. It is a historical fiction book set in the Victorian time period, and it is all about prostitutes. <laughs> or ladies in waiting. Um, it is all about a particular one prostitute or lady of pleasure who ends up getting into a relationship that changes her status. Um, but it doesn't change her working status, it changes her class status. Um, the prostitute is named Sugar. Sugar could also be named a temptress. Synonyms. It was an interesting book. I can't say it was a favorite or that I would recommend it to every reader out there. But for a historical fiction book, again set in the you know Victorian, I hope I have that right, the Victorian time period, I'm sure editing Shelley will come in and tell you if I'm wrong. Shelley, stop doubting yourself. The Victorian time period is right. And it was my first book with Michelle Faber, who is, you know, relatively well known as a living author these days. Um, and I, I quite enjoyed <laughs> the book. It had long meandering chapters and uh, quite a cast of characters that you got to know very, very well. Um, again, not the best book I've read, but it took me, I think, more than six weeks to read. Would it be a Shelley video without some gratuitous noise? Prompt two, a book that you read this year that was outside of your comfort zone. For me, that was anything by the ancient Greeks. If you told me at the beginning of 2021 that I was going to fall head over heels in love with the ancient Greeks and their style and their writing and that I would love it and find it challenging all at the same time, I would have said, I think you're talking about a different reader. <laughs> I, th I think you are talking about somebody else. That's not me. And I was totally proven wrong. I heard about the ancient Greeks uh, quite a bit on booktube and so I picked up several 
several ancient Greek writers. <clears throat> the first being uh, Aristophanes, and I read Liz Estrada, and that kicked off um, a three book reading stint, soon to be four, because I'm going to be reading The Odyssey uh, by Homer in January. And I just love it. I love the challenge. I love the humor. I like the translations. I, I, I just love it all. The whole, the whole Greek, ancient Greek reading experience has been absolutely phenomenal. And I, I'm just, I'm so glad that I found them this year. Okay, prompts three and four have the same answer for me. So I'm gonna answer them together. And it's how many books did you reread? And your favorite reread of this year? I only reread one book. And I read it this year for the first time and then I turned around and reread it because I was so impressed or in, in, engaged with the story. Um, and it was a listen for me, so I re-listened to it. And that would be Unfollow by Megan Phelps Roper. So by default, it's also my favorite reread of the year. Um, what I loved about this book was that it, ta it taught me about a side of humanity that I don't think about. I forgot to tell you the genre. Megan Phelps Roper, this is her memoir. Let me tell you what the book is about. The book is about a family here in the United States that lives in Kansas, I believe. Not sure. Um, but they, they're, they're, it's called the Westboro Baptist Church and there are about 80 members of this Westboro Baptist Church, mostly from the same family, the Phelps Roper family or the Phelps family. The church was founded by Fred Phelps, and he was an activist, a civil rights activist, and a lawyer. And somewhere in his older years, he started this picketing ministry where he pickets against gay, like LGBTQ plus people. Um, he, he protested so many things, um, <clears throat> and it's done in the most crass, and disgusting way possible. So they, per, the, the family uses enticing slurs on, on purpose, um, hateful, disgusting um, slurs on their posters and have these their children and um, adults hold up these, um, you know, posters or uh, picketing signs. Um, and they do it to garner, to, on purpose, to garner media attention so that their message that they think that they are spreading um, uh, on purpose or that they are spreading as, as a way that God told them to spread this message, they do it in this hateful way to garner media attention to spread their message even further. And they've been quite successful. They have been banned from many countries around the world. They, um, <clears throat> they are just, they're just a, a, an interesting family to get to know. And what Megan Phelps Roper does is not only does she tell this side of the story where I was learning all about this family and their background and their picket, picketing ministry that is, you know, really awful. But then Megan Phelps Roper talks about her mom, who is a huge part of this, this ministry. Um, this really, you know, now, now even Megan Phelps Roper would agree that this ministry is harmful and disgusting and founded in hate um, and so on and so forth. But when she's telling you this story, she never loses sight of the humanity of her family and that they are also humans that are influenced by bad, dangerous, and horrible ideas, even though they're smart people. I think out of the 12 children or 11 children, nine or 10 of them are lawyers. They've argued in front of the Supreme Court. I could go on and on about this family. They are just so interesting. And um, so anyways, I listened to this and then I basically didn't know what to, to read. Imagine that now. <laughs> I don't, that, that would never happen now. Um, but then I, I just turned around and re-listened to it. Megan Phelps Roper has a mesmerizing reading voice. And so, and she reads these long passages of scripture to kind of set the tone for the chapter. And then she, it, it, throughout the chapter, she shows you, she shows the reader how the scriptural passage gets twisted around to support this hateful ministry. It's really a fascinating read. And I, I definitely appreciated it and enjoyed it this year. Again, may not be for everyone, but one that I definitely enjoyed. Okay, prompt five, a book that you've read this year that you look forward to rereading in the future. I have two. My hands are very full because I have Harry and I have books and stuff. Okay, my two are right here. I have Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf and I have Persuasion right here by um, Jane Austen. 
I look forward to reading both of these. I'm most uh, looking forward to reading Mrs. Dalloway, <laughs> Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, because my plan all along is, has been to read The Hours by Michael Cunningham and revisit Mrs. Dalloway sometime in 2022 um, to get a better understanding of Virginia Woolf's writing and writing style and uh, maybe uh, more subtle messages in her work. Prompt six, favorite short story or novella that you read this year? That would be probably The Geranium by Flannery O'Connor. I read that earlier this year and I really enjoyed it. I also read Everything That Rises Must Converge, which is one of her most famous stories. Also very, very good. Um, but The Geranium for me was very, very surprising. And there was something about the way the story was told that really hooked me. Um, and I, so anyway, so Flannery, Flannery O'Connor definitely takes the the prize for best short story, though I didn't read a ton of short stories or novellas this year. Okay, um, prompt seven, Mass Appeal, a book you liked and would recommend to a variety of readers. That would definitely be Black Beauty by um, Anne Sewell. I really, really loved Black Beauty for a number of reasons. I didn't love it as in like when I was reading it, I was falling in love with the story and I love the characters and I love Black Beauty the horse. It wasn't like that. What Anne Sewell does um, is that she takes the reader to task about what is a good pet owner and what is a bad pet owner and what that entails. And I, I really thought it was a very important book. I think young people should read it in order to get a better understanding of how to treat animals with humanity and respect. And I also, after I read it, I realized I would be a really good pup owner. <laughs> like, I didn't really think that about myself before. And after reading that, I was like, I, I would be a fantastic pet owner. Everything, everything that Sewell describes sounds like me. Um, uh, the love that I would give a pet, the um, patience and understanding. And so very shortly after, we got Harry, who's grumpy that I moved him. Isn't that right? We got you. And so I think that mass appeal... I, it's not that I think everyone will love it, but I think a lot of people will learn something from it. Um, and just, I just really was impacted by that read. Specialized Appeal, a book that you liked but would be hesitant to recommend to just anybody. That would be Christina Rossetti's Selected Poems. I loved Christina Rossetti as a Victorian poet that I explored this year, but I understand that Victorian poetry isn't for everybody or if you like Victorian poetry, often people already have their favorites that they revisit. So I could understand why Christina Rossetti maybe wouldn't be for everybody, and I don't know if I would recommend her to just anyone, um, but if you, know, you were really into Victorian poetry, if you wanted to explore a young female poet, um, then I would definitely recommend Christina Rossetti. Prompt nine, reflect on your year as a bookish content creator, goals met, good and bad memories. I have just wonderful and, and amazing memories about booktube. I started my channel on a true whim, the most whimsical whim that ever did wander by. Um, I, I, just, I just really started it and then it was off to the races. I fell in love immediately with the community with everyone that makes videos, with everyone that comments on my videos. I, I just, it was just such a, a, an amazing like moment or a long moment that I feel like I'm still experiencing. The wonder of booktube has not worn off. I really loved my Jane Austen tag that I made. Um, that was kind of a, a big defining step. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out videos and video style that I like. But what's wonderful is that, in reading style even, like I, I feel like I explore quite a bit um, for, for, you know, one little lonesome reader. <laughs> and, um, and you all just let me do it um, and you follow along. And that is shocking to me. Um, I, I love the community. I love all the buddy reads. I love everything that I've read because people have recommended it. I mean, everything has just been a positive experience. And um, 
you know, I hope it stays that way. I, I've just loved every moment of, of this bookish journey. So yeah, so for that, I thank you all. I thank you all for everybody who's watching, for everybody who's commented, for everybody that <laughs> I've interacted with in one way or another. It's just been amazing. And I'm gonna stop gushing because um, I could probably go on for a little while about how incredible this experience has been. Don't worry, I continue to gush. <laughs> I will say that there is just something really sweet about taking a very private thing, right? Like reading, um, something that's very personal and, and very unique to the individual and to open it up and let people in and then to be met with enthusiasm, encouragement, excitement, that uh, words fail me at this moment uh, for a bookish creator, <laughs> words fail me. It's, it's just wonderful. Um, and, and, and I am really grateful for, for this community and, and for, for just this whole year. It's, it's been great. Um, that is it for me. The last thing is to tag people. I am going to echo what Aaron said, and I thought about it before he even said it. But I said, I think I'm going to tag people who have the space to do this tag. Um, by the end of the year or at the beginning of the, the following year, if you have space in your schedule and you're interested in doing this, I tag you. <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so, so much for being here. And, um, you know, for me and my sweet little pup, Harry, who's chewing on my pants and growling now. Oh no. What a, what a non-magical ending this is. <laughs> That's all right though. But for me and my sweet pup, Harry, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye guys. Bye from me too. Bye. <laughs>